Now, whenever you will uh, go to the design, the, uh, the output will change according to the uh, requirement because user will give basically in the user requirement in two mode. What are the power requirements for the systems and what is the payload he used to take. So depending upon the power requirement and payload requirement, the shape will change. If uh, power requirement is more important or uh, big power requirement related to the payload, we will design airship in such a way that it gives a maximum power because profile of the airship systems, the power availability due to that same area will be different. Are you getting my point? Because the angle and orientation of the normal of the solar cells will vary with the profile and that will affect the output. So it will depend upon what is the more important. You have to trade off between. Okay, and if you want to take up only, pay, you have to consider only payload, then you don't have to bother about the solar systems in like in a normal airship. But because, but you have to take care of the power input as well and that will drive the shape to take care these effects simultaneously. This is a big problem actually. So while designing you have to, uh, there are so, much, so many research going on to minimize the uh, structural weight because the structural weight is driven by the, uh, you know, enveloped GSM. And 50% of the system's weight is due to the st its structure, uh, envelope structure. So we, we want to use a very low weight density of the material which can perform same strength as a big one. So this is the uh, challenge. And uh, another challenge is it should be, you know, at the end of the course, you. We are much aware of the, it should be a UV, uh, UV protection should be there and adhesive to manufacture that envelope, lightning protection as I said, external object impact strength, something hit the airship and it should be durable, should be able to stand, gas permeability and uh, proper pressurization to maintain the envelope shape and rigidity, otherwise the performance will go down to uh, uh, stand with the temperature variations. These are the challenges. So when we come to the envelope material choices, actually these are the target which will full, fulfill our uh, requirement. We want a very low density with a high strength material. So envelope configuration options, different options may be there. We have to take care of the pressurization, take off and landing. Uh, you have, you need a structure, infrastructure. And these are the other requirements for the configuration. A station keeping in thermal consideration, we have to take care of anti-lightening anti measures because uh, it will affect the systems and whenever it get damage, then other systems, another problem will arise. It, it's uh, because the envelope is not a big issue. Uh, it is not a, so much of costly, but uh, the systems mounted in that uh, uh, airship is actually a very costly. There is a major advantage over the satellite system because in satellite, we don't recover our systems after it exp its expiry. But in this system, it can recover actually. And uh, envelope is not a big issue, in plus it's very che uh, cheap material. Uh, whenever we can compare to the systems uh, at the, as a payload, which will serve the, our requirement. So to handle these systems, uh, people are working and they are uh, around the globe. 
you can see it starts at ATG UK compound propulsion system to enable the airship to hold a station within one kilometer of Q. It is designed in such a way that it will not go beyond that cube in three, di three dimension, one kilometer of cube. Accuracy is needed. And to uh, take care of that, they have included in the lateral thrust to counter the prevailing stratospheric wind and other systems. That is a requirement actually. Otherwise, it will shift to some other location and that will create a problem and it will go beyond your uh, 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 radar uh, or main purpose which we want to serve. That will go beyond, it will shift, that will create a problem. So thermal consideration is a big issue uh, while designing because the temperature at the day will be higher at the night, will be very low. And the temperature will affect the buoyancy as well as the energy or output of the systems and uh, because uh, whenever temperature will be high it will try and gases will try to expand and uh, soil cell will, will not perform very accurately at the high temperature its efficiency efficiency will go down that's the problem so on board system to uh, because uh, at the daytime, we can give directly power to the propulsion system and to the payload system. But at night, we don't have any power sources. So we have to keep, uh, we have to store that power in a daytime to, so that it can uh, serve the power requirement to the payload as well as propulsion system at, at night as well. So we will need a storing systems or battery, onboard batteries and solar gen regenerative fuel cells. So regenerative fuel cells is another area. So many research are going on, on in the systems because the efficiency is higher than the, uh, and it is better uh, with the lithium ion battery in comparison to that. To store same energy, lithium ion battery, you will need a big lithium ion battery. And whenever you use a regenerative fuel cell, the system or the battery weight will come down, but it will cost more. It is another area. So these are the actually a uh, representation of solar regenerative fuel concepts. At the daytime, the power available is higher and we will need a direct power very low. The extra power, which is uh, 2 minus 1, is basically stored for the night time, which is 3 actually in both direction and the concept is that uh, you utilize the water uh, very simple uh, at least in <laughs> watching it is uh, you separate uh, hydrogen and oxygen uh, by electrolyzing and then after combination it will create energy and which will be given to the propulsion system propulsion unit and uh, payload systems at the night time so any doubt in this system, fine now. So uh, this is another picture rep representation. Uh, we separate hydrogen and oxygen uh, with the using the energy at the daytime, and the same uh, uh, stored energy you can get while combining hydrogen and oxygen. So it is a recycling of uh, hydrogen and oxygen, producing a water. Then adding in it, we will uh, separate hydrogen and oxygen. It will go on. So, for the protection of from lightning, uh, uh, there are methods, and it should be with with a stand at that height because the stratospheric uh, condition is uh, uh, the protection. Uh, lightning will be there, and it might affect, it might damage our envelope. So, there are systems available to take care of that. So launch and recovery and ground handling is another big problem because the, the size of the such systems is very large. And uh, uh, to handle such systems and it is fragile, you know, it, uh, if you will not take care, proper take care, it will, it can, it might damage the envelope. And the recovery of such a big system is another issue and uh, uh, launch as well. So these are the proposed 
a private property style launch technique for launching. See, these are the another methods by limiting the velocity. So you can see the while launching in a rocket mode. So it is very clear to by picture. Actually, you don't need uh, any explanation. So it is showing a re recovery to take care of the payload systems by different method, maybe resting in the water directly or resting in a boat. Ground handling is a big issue actually. Uh, you need a large infrastructure to handle these type of systems. And uh, in later slides we, we will see uh, uh, how big uh, actually uh, there is a need infrastructure to store these type of systems, uh, to uh, handle these type of systems. And you are aware already that there uh, used to be a mast and mooring mast and winching systems. That is to get damaged. So these are the requirements. I know you, I believe that you are aware of with the, all these systems at the end of this course. So, these are the another requirement to handle such a fragile vehicle near to ground. That's obvious. So you can see how big is the actually requirement to handle systems. And uh, for the Zeppelin hangar, you can see the height of the mines available with the actually in the systems size. You can compare how big is that, you know, as you can see the height and the height to mast 